Hello and welcome to this session in which we will explain what is cost of goods manufactured and how to complete a schedule of cost of goods manufacture. The schedule of cost of goods manufacture contain three types of cost which are direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. This schedule will help us compute the cost of raw material used in operation as well as direct labor used in operation plus overhead applied, which is manufacturing overhead applied, which in turn, it's going to help us compute our finished goods as well as computing cost of goods sold. So if you notice cost of goods manufacture, it's going to have many, many various components. But at the end of the day, all the cost will be in finished, go in finished goods. And once the finished goods sold, it becomes cost of goods sold. Now, in a typical cost or managerial accounting course, you will see this cost of goods, schedule of cost of goods manufactured in a format like this. It's a lot of numbers, but we're going to try to simplify the process. So take a look at this figure and I'm going to explain it. Then we'll take a look at it again and you will see it's not as bad. So we're going to start by raw material. Remember, we're going to be accounting for material, labor and overhead. The problem with, with material is you need to compute how much material was used in operation. So how do you compute how much material used with, op with operation? You will start with your raw material. And how much raw material did you have in beginning inventory? And for the sake of illustration, we're going to assume you have $10. I'm going to keep the numbers simple. $10 of beginning raw material. This is how much you have. $10 worth of raw material, wood. Then you purchased an additional $70 worth of woods. You produce tables. This is what we're producing. Now, beginning raw material, what you started with, $10 in wood plus $70 in raw material, it's going to give you raw material available for use in production. So you have $80 worth of wood that you can use to produce those tables. At the end of the period, you are going to deduct how much wood left over. What's the ending inventory in raw material? How do you know this? You count how much you have left. We counted how much we have left and we find out we still have five dollars well if we have eighty dollars available we only we still have five dollars it means 75 dollars of the raw material was used in operation it means it was transferred from raw material to what to the process well that's good now we're starting to compute our manufacturing cost the first thing is raw material that we computed in step one direct material used now we still have five dollars unused which is inventory but we have to keep track of what was used and what was unused. Then for the sake of illustration, we have $100 of labor and $25 of manufacturing overhead. And the reason I have those two in a similar sim same color is because those two are considered conversion cost. So notice now we have material, labor, and manufacturing overhead. Usually labor and manufacturing overhead, usually it's giving. And remember, those two are called conversion costs because the, the term conversion cost will become very handy when we talk about process costing. Now, when we add those all three together, labor, material, and overhead, it's going to give us total manufacturing cost incurred this period. So this is the manufacturing cost. We incurred this period $200, 75 plus 100 plus 25. Now, this manufacturing cost was used in production, was used in work in process. Now, if we're manufacturing tables, we're going to have some unfinished tables at the beginning of work in process. And we happen to have $25 worth of tables partially completed. This period, we added $200 to work in process. Now, if we started with $25, we added $200 into the process. In total, we have total work in process for the period $225. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to count how much unfinished tables we have. And that's going to be our ending work in process. We're going to deduct our ending work in process. And whatever's not in work in process, if it's not in work in process, how much is that? It's $215. Well, that's, that's, it means it's cost of goods manufactured this period. So this is the amount that we finished. So if it's finished, Take it out of finished, take, take it on, out of work and process and put it put it into finished goods. Now in finished goods, we're gonna have some tables already completed, $50 worth of tables. We're gonna add the 215 that we incurred this period. In total, we're gonna have cost of goods available for sale 265. Then again, 
We're going to count our ending inventory, ending inventory finished goods, which we happen to have 15, and that's going to keep us with cost of goods sold 250. So notice this is how the cost flow from raw material, from raw material all the way to finished goods and all the way to cost of goods sold. Now we happen to sell those goods for, I don't know, $600. It doesn't matter what we sold them for. But the point is, you saw how the, this process worked. So you need to understand that this schedule is composed of many moving pieces. And this is how you would see it in a typical undergraduate course. So notice this is the, the, this is the first step, the raw material. Direct labor is giving. Factory overhead, usually it's giving. Or if it's applied, it's, you have to use a formula. Then you would use what you total manufacturing cost plus beginning work in process minus ending work in process will give you cost of goods manufactured. From, from, from cost of goods manufactured, you could figure out cost of goods sold. Now, most likely, if you're listening to me, you're either an accounting student or a CPA candidate looking for some help about this topic. Great, you have arrived. Farhatlectures.com provide you with lectures, multiple choice, true false questions. That's going to help you in your accounting courses as well as your CPA exam. I don't replace your CPA exam. I'm a useful addition. I can help you. The reason you're watching because you were looking for some help and you found it. So go a step further and subscribe. Connect with me on my social media, LinkedIn. Like this recording, subscribe, share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Let's take a look at a few examples to illustrate the computation. This is what you will see in your exam, in undergraduate, or in, on the CPA exam. You need to see this process in pieces and make sure you know how to put the whole process together. Here we are being asked, what is the cost of direct material used? And questions like these can be used on farhatlectures.com to practice. Beginning raw material was 30,000. This is the beginning. During the month, 270 was purchased. So we're going to add the 270 to the beginning. Account at the end of the month revealed we still have 20. Well, if we started with 30, we purchased 70. It means we had in total 300,000. If 20 is left, it means we used 280. Now, it doesn't mean we used all of them 100%. Maybe some of it was wasteful. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not an ending inventory. It's used. So the answer is 280. Now, again, this used go to eventually work in process. Direct material used in production total 280. Direct labor was 370. And manufacturing overhead was 185 was added during the month. What is the total manufacturing cost? Well, the total manufacturing cost would include direct labor used, direct material used, plus manufacturing overhead, which if we add 280, if we add 280 plus 370 plus 185, if my math is right, will give us 835,000, which is the cost of goods manufactured during the month. Now, again, this amount goes to work in process and from work in process, some of it will end up in finished goods. Beginning work in process is 120. Manufacturing cost added to production, 835, what we computed the prior session, the prior, the prior slide. There were 205 of partially finished goods remaining work in process. What is the cost of goods manufactured during the month? Well, we started with 120, the beginning. We transferred to the process, 835. So in total, we should have 955, and we have left, which is we did not transfer, 205, which is still ending work in process. And again, if my math is right, the answer should be 750, and that's 750. That's cost of goods manufactured during the month. Now, what's going to happen to that cost of goods manufactured during the month? It's going to go to finished goods, because if it's finished from work in process, look, it's something like this. If this is work in process and this is finished goods, once it leaves work in process, it goes to finished goods. Now it's in finished goods. Beginning finished goods is 120. Cost of goods manufactured for the month 750, which was transfer, and ending finished goods is 160. Well, we started with 120. This is the schedule. We added to the finished goods 750, and that's going to give us 970. Then ending was 160 minus 160. Let's see if I have an answer here for this. 970 minus 160. That's 810. Let me just double check the math. 120 plus 750 equal to, I'm sorry, 870, not 970, 870 minus 160, that's 710. Yes, I do have an answer for this, 710, and that's the cost of goods sold for the month. What should you do? Go to farhatlectures.com and work additional multiple choice through false and practice exercises. Look at additional resources to help you understand this topic. Invest in yourself. 
don't shortchange yourself. Your accounting education is a large investment. Take it seriously. It's going to pay you dividend down the road. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.